In this video, I'll show you my views on Starfield as a star citizen, and most importantly, what I believe Starfield has unintentionally become to star citizen. Let's talk. Starfield has surprised me with a sheer amount of experiences. The main quests are intriguing, but its side quests and unexpected encounters make this game shine. An example of this was when I traveled to the orbit of a planet in a new star system and found a massive ship partly functional in orbit. I decided to board it and investigate to find that it's infested with pirates with a defective gravity generator. Due to this, I found myself battling pirates while in EVA and to see every physicalized object drop when the gravity generator reactivates and deactivates from time to time was a phenomenal experience. There is so much to do with partial space exploration, I'll get into what that means a little bit later, base building, ship building, scaling up your character to even modifying your weapons, spacesuits, and equipment after researching the tech for them. I have to admit, I'm pleasantly surprised with the amount of things you can do in Starfield. Star Citizen allows you to do what you want, when you want. You can take missions in various careers you choose, whether it's ship combat, FPS, mining, bounty hunting, salvaging, trading, or even exploration. The level of freedom I found in Starfield was great, but Star Citizen takes it up to the next level. You see, you can do all these things I've listed and more. Star Citizen is an MMO, meaning you can choose to do these things I just listed solo or with the crew of your actual friends or people you run into in the game universe. Star Citizen adds depth to its gameplay mechanics to the highest degree. For instance, if you choose to be a miner, you need to purchase or rent a mining ship like a Miss Prospector. You need to decide the types of ore you're looking for. This dictates where you need to go to find it, what equipment you need to have installed on your ship, and even what personal armament you need to have because PvP pirates are a real thing. You also need to consider food and water for the sake of survival if you're going further away from the more populous areas. If you're on a large ship, you need to crew it up with actual people to help you man various stations like turrets, shields, systems. With the upcoming engineering gameplay, you'll need to account for someone who looks after the ship systems so you don't run out of oxygen or burn out if there is a fire on board during combat or system malfunctions. After mining it, you'll need to consider moving this to a refinery to refine this. Then after refinement, you'll need to move it to a location where they're willing to buy it. In the category of gameplay, I have to give it to Star Citizen as it offers what Starfield does but on the next level. Starfield feels a bit arcadey in respect of FPS gameplay. It's a fast paced feel with potential verticality if you choose to use your jetpack. I have to admit it has tons of cool guns with variety. I like the fact that you can mod them even with the variations of ammo rounds available to use is refreshing. The NPC AI are responsive and can be a bit challenging. They do well with finding cover when you engage them. With the right skill you won't even need to take cover during engagement. Your character can sprint for quite a bit but is limited by the amount of O2 it has in its spacesuit. But it's awkward when this happens when you're in a city while wearing your regular clothes. Your player character has a simple health bar that depletes when hit but it can be replenished with a med pack or food. There are other health effects like poisoning that can simply be removed by antidotes. Star Citizen on the other hand is in the realm of simulation. The player character has health status for each limb and their head. Each can sustain damage individually like in real life. The bones can be fractured, you can bleed, you can have concussions, etc. These things affect you in some way in real time. You can heal yourself with the right equipment, but to a certain limit depending on your injuries. Depending on the tiers, the injuries can be addressed by medical facilities like hospitals or medical clinics, and yes, you have to travel there, or you can request for someone to pick you up. FPS combat is realistic. The weapons look great with variation. In the future, they plan on adding mag stripping and refilling various round types to suit different play styles, just to add a little bit more depth to the mechanic. The NPC AI are a bit disappointing due to network issues, which is still being worked on. In Starfield, your character has a helmet and a spacesuit that has various attributes depending on what you buy or find. In Star Citizen, you have an armor piece for each arm, chest, leg, and helmet. Each have their own individual attributes. Ship combat in Starfield is simple but a bit arcadey as well. Star Citizen is fully simulated, allowing for a skill curve, simple enough for new players to understand but steep enough for veterans to strive to master. You actually have to learn to land in Star Citizen, while in Starfield, you get a loading screen. 
Don't get me wrong, there isn't anything wrong with Starfield being arcadey, but if realism is your thing, you're better off in Star Citizen. Starfield's simplistic mechanics introduce new players to simulation-based games like Star Citizen, and that's okay. The graphics of Star Citizen is stunning. It's significantly better than Starfield. From beautifully designed ships to character models, it is easy to tell which looks better. This is not a knock on Starfield as the graphics are also good as well, but cannot compete with Star Citizen. There is a drastic difference between Starfield and Star Citizen in regard to the flight model. Star Citizen is realistic while Starfield feels more simplistic. In Star Citizen, your ship flies differently in space as opposed to how it flies in atmosphere as we expect. If your ship has wings, it flies better in atmosphere. If you have damage to engines or parts, it flies differently as well. You can find true flight simulation in Star Citizen. Starfield does not allow you to fly in atmosphere or planets as you can only fly in space. The game universe in Starfield is vast in comparison to Star Citizen. Starfield has a full galaxy filled with over a thousand planets that are explorable, but not seamlessly. You'll be navigating around through loading screens. Since Star Citizen is still in development, we only have access to one star system, with four planets and some moons to explore seamlessly. Once you load into the game, you can go anywhere and do anything without loading screens. Star Citizen will have multiple systems to visit once they implement the server meshing technology rumored to be debuted by the end of this year. The ships in Star Citizen are amazing, by far the most beautiful designs in space games. These ships can be modified with components to improve their performance. Their interiors are no different, well designed but built for function. Starfield has nice ships that can be built and modified. Some can be a bit blocky, but if you know what you're doing, you can build really cool looking ships. I like how you can build out any ship you want in Starfield. What's impressive about Starfield ships is their interiors. You can design your ship to have the interior you want with variations. What sets Star Citizen apart from Starfield is the level of immersion in respect to exploration. To go anywhere, you need to fly, walk, or drive there. There are no loading screens. If you want to explore a particular cave on a planet, you need to account for fuel, gear, vehicles if needed, weapons, food, and drink. If you bring a big ship, you need a crew of real people to help you man that ship. You have the option to leave the mothership in orbit while your parasite ship undocks to explore the planet to uncover any potential threats or interesting points of interest. The parasite ship can return to provide the necessary info to the mothership for clearance to descend from orbit and land to allow the rover and crew to depart and explore that cave. You see, all this is possible solo, but also with friends in Star Citizen. Here's what Starfield is to Star Citizen. Starfield is the chauffeur, while Star Citizen is the owner of the mansion. What I mean is, Starfield is a gateway game to Star Citizen. All aspects of Starfield's gameplay mechanics, experiences, are an introduction to the idea of a universe where you can do what you want, when you want. The Starfield player base will not only realize its limits, but also long for an experience without limits with people they know and those that are yet to meet. Star Citizen is in the right position to offer these experiences. Bethesda just introduced the idea of a universe simulation to the entire gaming community and is funneling them over to Star Citizen due to its lack of multiplayer, full-on space exploration, and immense sense of immersion Star Citizen offers. For example, Starfield introduces mining in space with your spaceship by just simply shooting at rocks while Star Citizen provides an in-depth mechanic that requires skill. Starfield introduces the idea of manning a spaceship and having companions with you to run and improve the performance of that ship with NPC AI, while Star Citizen enables players to have friends on board and handle various aspects of the ship requiring teamwork, skill, and situational awareness. Remember, every time someone watches a Starfield video or guide on YouTube, they'll get a Star Citizen ad. For those that play Starfield and is just hearing about Star Citizen, we welcome you. For those that hated on Star Citizen due to Starfield's 2023 launch, we've been expecting you.